Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Tech and More Tech. I'm Carlo, and in this video, we're gonna go over Home Assistant Blueprints. As always, if you prefer a more detailed written version of this, head on over to techtechandmoretech.com or check the link in the description just below that like button. Home Assistant Blueprints are another step towards making Home Assistant more user-friendly and more inviting to smart home users. They're essentially shared automation templates that anyone can create, share, and implement in their own Home Assistant setup. Automations in Home Assistant started as YAML code files, and at their core, they still are, which presented a barrier to entry for those that wanted to make Home Assistant their main smart home platform. Admittedly, there is enough documentation and support out there for those that are willing to put in a little bit of work, they could easily code their own automations in Home Assistant without too much trouble. The barrier was lowered when Home Assistant introduced a GUI to their automation page, which allowed you to pick and choose your triggers, conditions, and actions, and set up your automations in a simpler manner. While the UI was not quite as polished as something like SmartThings or HomeKit, it was simple enough that it lowered the barrier of entry for more than enough people to come aboard the Home Assistant train. Blueprints takes that a step further and I wouldn't be surprised if mainstream smart home ecosystems utilize this concept in their own apps. Simple automations are straightforward to create for just about anyone, but some more complex ones can be daunting and are just not worth the time. Sometimes they're even just easier to create in something like Node-RED. Blueprints are essentially automation templates. People come up with complex and creative automations that they've tested and implemented themselves, and then they share them with the community. For me personally, I'm not a very creative person, so it's great to see what more creative minds are able to come up with, and then I can choose to implement it in my own smart home. Home Assistant has made it incredibly simple to utilize these blueprints, and the community is great about documentation and explaining how to set it up. Your Home Assistant setup must be up to date with the new date-based version numbers. So for me, it's 2021.1.4 is the most recent as time of this video and 2020.12 is the oldest version of Home Assistant that supports Blueprints. So if we log into Home Assistant and we get to our main page, if we go to Configuration in the bottom left, we will see all the different options. And in the second block of options, we will see Blueprints. If you don't have those, like I said, we're gonna go to Supervisor in the bottom left. System is the last tab, and then you can see your core and your supervisor versions. If you're not on the update, most up-to-date one, it'll give you the option update, in which case do that, and then you know pause and then come back to the video. Once you're all updated, you will then be able to click on blueprints. So now if you go back to configuration, you should see blueprints in the second block of options, select that. And I think you should have two of them sort of by default, uh, motion activated light and zone notification. You don't have to use these. In fact, you can delete them if you really want to. It's more there just to kind of show you what it looks like. Instead, what we're gonna do is click on Discover More Blueprints. It's gonna take us to the community page of Home Assistant, and that's where people upload their um, blueprints so you can kind of see what is available and whatnot. I'm gonna select on top, and that'll kind of give me the most, uh, most popular ones, basically. So let's take a look at a couple of these um, and set them up just so you can kind of follow along, see what you need to do, what you may not need to do. Um, from what I've seen, this is all really well documented. There's lots of uh, questions, replies. You can ask the person that made it um, questions if you need to, if you need more clarification on things. But as far as I can tell, the at least the sort of simple ones, the straightforward ones um, are really easy to get implemented with your own setup. Uh, so there's a couple here that I've used before. I'm going to get them set up again for the sake of the video. So low battery level detection and notification for all battery sensors. That's an excellent one. We can do wake up light alarm with sunrise effect and then send a camera snapshot on motion. I think those three are really good. So low battery detection is a pretty straightforward, pretty self-explanatory um, automation. Basically, as you accumulate various sensors, um, and uh, peripherals around the house that are battery operated, you can, you're going to need to change the batteries eventually. Now, things like sensors and stuff like that are, for the most part, um, they last for like months, if not years at a time, but you may not know when you need to update their battery. Um, so this will basically 
take every single device that has a battery status entity within it in Home Assistant, add it to the list, and then it will then check every time to, or you know, every interval to see if the battery is under a certain threshold. So let's implement that. So if we go to our Home Assistant, back to that tab, in the bottom right, we've got Import Blueprint. Let's click on that, and it's gonna ask you for URL. And that's all you have to do. So we're gonna go back to the uh, low battery level uh, blueprint, and we're gonna copy paste that URL. So copy back here and paste and preview blueprint. It's gonna load it and then import blueprint. And it's gonna load up in your list of blueprints. So let's go ahead and create automation for this. In the name and the description, you can change the name, obviously, if you prefer something different. Uh, for right now, that's fine. You can leave it as it is, blueprint to use. And here we go. We got a couple different things that we can do. So battery warning level threshold. So this is basically, it's gonna do a check to see if what the battery status of your device or your devices is. And if it's under this threshold, it will then notify you. 20% is a little bit high. I'm gonna change it to 15. You can leave it at 20, it doesn't matter. Time to be tested on is pretty self-explanatory. 10 a.m., fine with me and then weekday to test. So you've got a range of zero to seven, zero being every day, and then one through seven being your weekdays, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, I'm gonna do Sundays or Saturdays, six. Now here's a nice little thing that this person implemented in their blueprint. They have the option to exclude sensors. And in their description, it says battery sensors like smartphones, for example, can be excluded. And that's really smart because if you have the Home Assistant app loaded on your phone, that will automatically grab a battery uh, status entity. But you don't really care if Home Assistant tells you that your phone battery is low. I mean, maybe you do, but it's only gonna tell you at 10 a.m. on Saturdays. It's not particularly useful. Um, instead, we care more about the different sensors we have around our house. So we can do area, device, entity. Instead, I'm just gonna pick the device and select my iPhone and my iPad. I don't care um, when those batteries are low because I use them all the time and I charge them accordingly. And then you've got actions. So this part was a little bit less self-explanatory in terms of like, hey, well, how can I set this up in a smart way? I'm gonna do a simple notification pushed to my phone. So that's gonna be an action type, a call service. The service is gonna be notify app iPhone. So that's gonna use the Home Assistant app on my iPhone to notify me. And then we're gonna do a message. If we go back to the low battery uh, tab for the actual blueprint, uh, this person has very kindly actually shown us kind of exactly what we can put as a message. So we're gonna go back to there, copy that message, that notification essentially, and paste it in here. And then it's gonna give us a message, low battery warning four, and then it's gonna tell us what sensor um, has a low battery. And then we can hit on save. This is a little bit tricky to test because I can't like just like deplete a battery on demand for the sake of the video. But essentially now, every Saturday morning at 10 a.m., Home Assistant is basically gonna do a sweep of all the different battery uh, power devices in my uh, Home Assistant or in my smart home. If anything is below 15%, it will then send me a push notification to my phone telling me, hey, this sensor has a low battery, and then I can go and change it. Super sweet. Super easy as well, as you saw. Let's go back to blueprints. Uh, wake up light alarm with sunrise effect. Let's do, take a look at that one as well. Um, a lot of people, some people have men asked in my um, 21 home automations video, kind of how I did the sunrise effect, um, how you do that, because some certain ecosystems don't really have a gradual um, automation for the lights. Uh, HomeKit and Alex and Google don't have that, for example. And even with Home Assistant, it's not uh, super straightforward. So this is actually a really good way of doing it. So let's copy and paste this as well. We're gonna import it just the same way. Preview and import. And then let's create that automation. Again, you can change the name and the description to whatever you want. I don't care, I'm gonna leave it as it is. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna select the entity or we're gonna select, select the light that's gonna give us that sunrise effect. I'm gonna go ahead and choose bedroom light. And then, so timestamp sensor, this one specifically is if you have an Android phone, it can get the alarm data from a Android 
alarm app. Um, I'm not exactly sure which one. I don't use Android phones, so um, if you go back to the documentation, it'll actually tell you. So um, the Android companion app can read uh, the next configured smartphone alarm. So if you use Android, whatever your next alarm is, it'll use that. Um, if you don't uh, have an Android phone or it, you don't want it to grab off that, you can just have a manual alarm. Um, so if you get up at the same time every day, you know, every week, um, then you can just set a manual one, so 7 a.m., that's fine. An additional entity to check before sunrise is triggered. So this is basically a condition that's gonna be, okay, maybe you only care about work days. So then you would select work days. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna not do that, but if you are interested in doing that, uh, again, links to everything down below so you can easily incorporate it yourself. Uh, one question is if you want, if you have multiple lights that you wanna sync, the way you can do it is um, it's addressed here, multiple lights for sunrise. Uh, essentially, if you have multiple lights like, in your room that you want to go up or multiple of the same kind of light, you can just group them together. Just create a, a new group that contains all those lights and then the entity select that group. Sunrise duration is gonna be how long before, how long the sunrise basically takes. So 25 minutes being, at the end of 25 minutes, your alarm is gonna go off and the light's gonna be at a peak brightness and 25 minutes before that is when it's gonna start. Um, so that's a 25 minutes is a pretty solid choice. So if you have a 7 a.m. alarm at 6.35 is when the light is gonna start at 1% and go up from there. Your minimum brightness is your minimum brightness one and then your maximum brightness is gonna be how what the max is. That's your range, so basically zero to full. You can change that around. Obviously, you don't want the light to be completely bright. Uh, maybe you only want it to halfway if only you're getting up and like uh, your partner isn't. That's gonna be sort of up to you, a little bit of uh, messing around. Minimum color temperature is basically gonna be how orange or how blue the light is when it starts. Uh, if you have uh, either color lights or um, white smart lights that can change color temperature, this is where you're gonna choose it. I would recommend leaving it at zero because then um, it's gonna be a nice sort of orangey hue when you're waking up and it's gonna be much more um, akin to a sunrise, which is the whole point of this automation. Um, you can add pre-sunrise actions and post-sunrise actions. That's a really excellent touch that this person uh, came up with. So as an example, pre-sunrise action, if you have a coffee maker plugged into a smart plug, you can have that smart plug turn on, for example, and it's gonna start brewing your coffee. Um, a post-sunrise action could theoretically be something like um, having music start playing when the alarm goes off. So for example, if you have like a playlist and a smart speaker, you can add that there and have it start playing media on there. So you have this sort of all encompassing wake up routine that automate, automatically happens. And that's that. Uh, the last one that I'm just gonna go over in this, in this video, obviously there are um, dozens of them, as you can see, probably hundreds, but send a camera snapshot notification on motion. I think this is great. This is basically so if you have an outdoor security camera, you can, every time motion passes and you have a motion sensor there, um, it'll just take a snapshot of what it saw and send it to you. So let's go back to our blueprints. We're gonna import this one as well. Preview blueprint, as you can tell, this is all very straightforward. Um, send camera and create automation. Again, you've, you've got your entities, you've got your camera, you've got your notification, very straightforward as to how to do things. Motion sensor, select, select whichever one you want, backdoor motion, camera, whichever camera you have uh, added into your home assistant uh, instance and devices to notify, you're probably gonna want something like your phone. Um, if you don't have the companion app on your phone already, I would highly suggest it because otherwise I don't know why um, you would need the notifications unless you're sitting at your computer all the time. Um, it's gonna ask you if it's an iOS device. Um, toggle presumably just wants to know how to send that push notification. And then it's got by default motion detected, by default uh, which motion sensor detected it. So if you've got multiple around the house, it'll tell you, um, you know, garage sensor or um, backyard sensor, etc. And then the delay, you can potentially wait a second or two if you know, let's say, uh, where the sensor is and where the camera are, maybe like a second apart in terms of someone walking, and that can do that for you. And you hit on save. So there you have it. Those are some of the sort of blueprints that you can download. Uh, like I mentioned, there are dozens of them. 
Um, some are works in progress, some aren't. Obviously, you're going to want to uh, read through them, make sure that they are exactly what you're looking for. Um, and a nice thing is you can actually always just look at the code. So if you are, let's say, savvy enough that you could code it up to yourself, code up yourself, or savvy enough that um, you can give a crack at you know coding and maybe changing up a little, a little bit, you can do that. You can just go to any of these and just copy paste the code. So yeah, you can basically just go in and copy paste the code into like a new automation and change it up. So for example, if you wanted to add a couple entities or you wanted to change how the notification worked, whatever, if there's uh, if the blueprint itself had a little bit of a limitation because you want to do something a little bit different, you can always just take the code and then mess around with it, play around if you had the time, if you have the inclination, and then make it sort of completely your own. And there you have it, Home Assistant Blueprints. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe button for plenty more videos to come. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I will get them as best I can. My question for you guys is, have you used uh, Blueprints in Home Assistant? How do you like them? Do you have any feedback? Uh, have you created your own? Have you implemented your own? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know, get that sort of discussion going. Until next time, see ya.